There comes a point in every astrophotographer's journey where we begin to ask ourselves the same questions. Can I improve my time efficiency? Can I automate this? How do I create repeatable images and framing? And today we're going to discuss those exact issues and I will walk you through my portable automated astrophotography rig. Hello again internet, Astro with Roro here. It's been a long journey for me to automate my rig while keeping it portable. And I hope this video helps you to avoid some of the pain that I encountered while discovering what I think is nearly the perfect automated portable rig. As always, there are chapters in the timeline down below so that you can flick through and find what interests you most. If you find videos like these helpful, then consider subscribing to help me continue creating content like this for you. Automation brings along five big benefits over imaging manually, and we're going to break each of them down and talk about them, as well as the hardware you can use to gain full automation. Let's start out with time efficiency. We're all in a fight against time. Clear night skies under a new moon are rarer than any of us would like to admit. So the ability to reduce your setup time is one of the great advantages of automation. Some of the major benefits come from plate solving your polar alignment, electronic focuses, and automating your flats. The second big benefit is improved accuracy. Maintaining optimal focus during large temperature swings, framing your deep sky objects down to pixel perfection, and calibration frames that precisely match your lights even taken days later are all possible with a well-automated rig. This leads me on to one of the most underrated benefits of automation, repeatability. Did you image a particular object last year and you want to add more integration time this year? Well, that's really easy with an automated rig. You can match the rotation of old images down to an arc minute accuracy with a simple click of a button. Repeatability also brings another big benefit. If you can match images between sessions with high accuracy, then you are free to change your image train without ruining your flats. This opens up the possibility of multi-object imaging sessions, where you jump from one object to the next. Perhaps you're like me and you have a really limited sky view and you want to jump between targets every two hours or so as they become visible. Well, that's easy. Or maybe you only want to image objects for a few hours as they're at their peak altitude to reduce atmospheric aberrations. With automation, you can image as many objects as you desire in a single night without worrying about matching data between sessions because you know you can repeat the outcomes of your images. Before we talk about the biggest benefit of all, if you're interested in matching data sets from multiple sessions or across multiple years, make sure you're subscribed as I'll be releasing a video detailing the best practices for saving, safely storing, and combining your images across many nights or even years. So do stick around for that one. So what is the final and arguably biggest benefit from automation? Well, it might not come as a surprise to you, but I'm putting it down to sleep. While your rig does all of the hard work, you can focus on getting some well-deserved shut-eye. This allows you to feel much more refreshed the next day when you actually start editing your images so you can do a better job with that. Alternatively, if you're not a fan of sleep, maybe you can do some visual astronomy while your camera sucks up those precious photons all on its own. So now you know what I believe are the biggest benefits of automation. Let's now dive into the four pieces of hardware and one piece of software that will get you there. This list assumes you already have a mount that can be computer controlled and a guide scope or off axis guider with a guide camera attached. Let's start off with the imaging camera. For complete automation, you will want a cooled DSO camera. These cameras can precisely control the temperature of the sensor, allowing you to create a dark frame library, which saves precious imaging time in the field and greatly simplifies your editing routine. Instead of taking your darks during the night, losing half an hour or so of your imaging time, you can instead do it on a cloudy day whenever you feel. I keep my darks for about 6 to 12 months before I update them, and I have a huge library ranging from a tenth of a second all the way up to 10 minutes. If you don't have a dedicated astronomy camera, then this is my first recommendation for you to pick up out of the hardware we're going to discuss. There are plenty out there, I've reviewed a few myself on this channel, 
and I'll soon be reviewing a new one, the QHY268M, so be sure to subscribe for that. Next up is an electronic focuser. Not only will this allow you to accurately focus time and time again, but it will also allow you to track the focus point images were taken at so that you can come back later and match the flats and lights if you choose not to take flats at the time of imaging. An electronic focuser is even more vital if you're using a monochrome camera so that you can easily switch between filters using filter offsets. If you are imaging in monochrome, you will also need to get an electronic filter wheel. Now you can obtain all your channels without ever needing to touch your rig. Also, if you're not swapping your filters every image, then you could be wasting more precious imaging time. Check out the video in the description for how you can improve your monochrome workflow. An electronic focuser and an electronic focus wheel are two large parts to improving the time efficiency and automation of your rig. Not only do they allow you to automate your rig, but they are much faster than their manual counterparts. Manually having to take a filter out, find the new filter, put it in, and then insert it back into a drawer, then after you finish that, having to manually find focus can be exceptionally time consuming, especially if you're trying to do manual focus with narrowband filters. Trust me, that is not a route you wanna go down. The final piece of hardware to complete the automation rig is a camera rotator. Some of you may be thinking, Rowan, that is complete overkill. I used to think so too, but after using the Pegasus Astro Falcon Rotator, I can assure you that the benefit of precise camera rotation is not to be underestimated. Even imaging at 250 millimeters on this Red Cat 51, I nearly always change the camera's orientation so that I can optimize my framing. This provides wonderful artistic control of your images and reduces the need for drastic cropping in post. Not only this, but it's the key item to matching images between sessions, as well as imaging multiple objects in a single session. With a camera rotator, you can very easily set up multiple images with completely separate framing and rotation on a single night. You can then precisely match the framing back later when you're taking your sky flats so that you can very precisely match all of your data across sessions. So now you know all the hardware required, but you will need a piece of software to control it. There's numerous pieces of astrophotography software that can achieve this, but my pick is Nina, the nighttime imaging and astronomy software. The latest beta two build was just released and has some huge improvements, allowing you to fully customize and automate your sessions to match your requirements. If you would like to download the Nina sequence files that I use to fully automate my equipment, then you can head over to my Patreon, link down in the description, where you can quickly get started with a fully customized and automated workflow. I will also be planning a follow-up video to this where I'm out in the field and will take you through my exact setup on Nina and showing you how it looks in the field when it's fully automated once we get some clear skies. Before we begin imaging, you will need to add these items to your imaging train. And here's the order that I settled on that works best for me. First up, you wanna put in your camera rotator. This means that everything behind this will get rotated together. And it is really important that your filters and your camera do rotate together as that minimizes the issues that you're gonna have with dust spots and flat frames later on. After you have your camera rotator, I put in my filter wheel and then my camera. Usually filter wheels and cameras should be right next to each other as this minimizes the chance of internal reflections from your filters. It also means that your filters can be the smallest size possible. If you have a field flattener, then you're gonna to wanna to put it between your telescope and the camera rotator. If you have an off-axis guider, then you wanna add it between the rotator and the filter wheel. This way it will rotate with your main camera sensor so you don't have to worry about the off-axis guider mirror getting in the way of your sensor, but it also doesn't get impacted by your narrowband filters, causing you to have exceptionally long off-axis guider imaging times. Now you're ready to pick your targets to image and let the automation take over. If you're planning on taking flats as you image, make sure you check out my video on flat frames to see how I take mine. Alternatively, you can take your flats the next day by matching the camera's rotator's rotation and focuses position with the information saved in the FITS headers. I will be doing an extensive review on each of these products you can see here, 
including revisiting my Red Cat review that I made about a year and a half ago, as I have had a huge amount of time imaging with this telescope and I have some extra things that I want to say about it. If there's anything in specific you would like me to go into more detail on with today's video in a future one, please leave your comments down below so that I know what interests you and I can answer those questions. Consider subscribing if you found this video interesting or entertaining, and I'll leave you with some images that I've captured with this gear. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.